Edward Lee Scown, an enigmatic creative of megalithic coral castle, was unarguably a brilliant stonemason, and despite having only a fourth grade education, was able to develop a comprehensive, almost arcane theory of the earth and its forces, believing that all matter and energetic phenomena resulted from microscopic single pole magnets, today called magnetic monopoles. Though these particles have been theorized by modern science, they have not yet been definitively observed. Lee Scowlin claimed that these miniature magnets were even smaller than photons of light and travel in streams through the Earth's center, interacting with similar magnets within matter, attracting them, and resulting in what we experience as gravitation. According to him, a celestial body's pole were a rich source of these mini magnets with the Earth's North Pole exuding streams of South Monopoles and the South Pole North Monopoles. With this theory, Lee Scowlin and his advice on enhancing the launching of rockets to the moon. This involved making a rocket into essentially a magnetic dipole, giving the nose a strong north pole orientation and the tail a strong south pole orientation, and aiming the rocket at the moon's north end, or north pole. South monopole streaming from the moon's north pole would attract the rocket's nose, and though he doesn't particularly mention it, it could be assumed that the rocket would be launched from the vicinity of the Earth's north pole, with the rocket's south pole tail to be repelled by south monopoles exuding from the Earth's magnetic north pole. This simultaneous lunar attraction and terrestrial repulsion is implied by the diminutive genius to enhance the rocket's trip to its destination with far less fuel and with larger payload capacity. Interestingly, a similar claim is expounded upon in a patent filed by a scientist named Dr. Horace C. Dudley and entitled Apparatus for the Promotion and Control of Vehicular Flight. The patent details the results of preliminary experiments of electrified rockets, revealing that charging a rocket coated with a conductive material to a positive electrostatic potential of several hundred thousand volts enabled it to be simultaneously repelled from the Earth's positive electrostatic charge and attracted to the ionosphere a crystalline negative charge. Dr. D Dudley's analysis brought him to conclude that properly electrifying full-size rockets in dry, cold weather could increase both their altitude and stability in several fold, increase height and a payload capacity due to the aforementioned geoelectrostatic interaction, and the stability due to the Lorentz force acting on the rocket as it moves with charge within the Earth's magnetic field. Further claims that this principle could be applied to all aerial vehicles which travel over the Earth's surface and not just rockets. The simultaneous attraction and repulsive forces in Lee Scowlin's magnetized rocket and Dudley's electrified rockets are very similar to John Warwick Keeley's celestial attraction and terrestrial propulsion concept of levitation and aerial suspension. Keeley's medium of interaction being sound vibrations as opposed to magnetism and electrostatics. What are the odds of three different men of different educational levels, origins, and mediums of force developing curiously similar concepts of levitation and propulsion? When asked how he single-handedly moved huge multi-ton blocks of stone without heavy machinery for use in his castle, Lee Scannon would only smile and say that he knew the secrets of the pyramids and other ancient megaliths. Did these secrets involve only clever ways to use internal levers and fulcrums, or did he utilize his unique theories of the Earth's forces of attraction and repulsion as a guide for practical weight reduction or levitation? Is there really any truth to the rumor that he floated the stones like hydrogen balloons?